Hey, it's Glenn here from Mehab, the world's leading physical therapy alternative, where we educate and empower you to take control of your recovery. In today's video, we're going to talk about the diagnosis of plantar fasciitis and why you've probably been misdiagnosed. The diagnosis of plantar fasciitis is incredibly flawed despite what everyone believes. Patients will often get a confident diagnosis of plantar fasciitis even though the diagnosis of plantar fasciitis is not as cut and dry as it's made out to be. Often for diagnosis, palpation is used for one of the assessment tools. The problem with palpation is it provides no clear indication on structure. There are a number of tissues on the bottom of the foot that all can produce pain. Pain in and of itself does not always mean that there's tissue damaged. Often a provider will come along and they'll palpate the bottom of your foot and press right in the base of your heel. And if you get any tenderness there, they'll say that you have a heel spur or the start of plantar fasciitis. But pain in the bottom of the foot alone is not enough. The bottom of the foot is incredibly sensitive, so digging around on it, even if you go and get a massage, like, oh, that's really tight and that's really sore, has no bearing on anything. All that it does is tell you that that's a painful area to press on. But you can also create pain in any area by pressing on it. So pick a spot in your body where you have no pain. If you dig into that muscle or dig into that tissue as hard as you want, eventually you're going to stimulate pain. That doesn't mean that there's any damage there and you don't have any pain unless you're pressing on it. One of the most commonly used diagnostic tools is the x-ray. People will often get given an x-ray when they come in with plantar or foot pain and if they identify a heel spur on the x-ray, they'll associate it with plantar fasciitis. The problem with heel spurs is that they appear in people that don't have any symptoms. Even surgical removal of heel spurs has shown no reduction in symptoms for patients. In general, heel spurs are considered irrelevant. Another big problem with the diagnosis of plantar fasciitis is the instrumentation and standardization of the testing procedure, and there is none. And why is that a problem? Without standardized instrumentation and procedures, we can't make a generalization about those studies. In order to have an accurate baseline, we all need to be starting from the same point. Part of the problem is, is that the plantar fascia will change thickness based upon the position of your foot. So if your foot is relaxed and your toes are uh, slightly flexed, it increases the thickness of the plantar fascia and give you, can give you a higher reading. If your toe or your foot is slightly dorsiflexed, what will happen is it will tense the plantar fascia and make it look thinner than it actually is. So without having a standardized procedure, we're going to get massive variances in the measurements of these thicknesses and the tension within the plantar fascia. Other forms of imaging include ultrasound and MRIs. Part of the problem with ultrasound and MRIs is that we're looking for slight changes in the thickness of the plantar fascia. We're looking for heel spurs, we're looking for increased swelling or tears in the plantar fascia. Unfortunately, all those symptoms also show up in people that don't have any pain. So if you have abnormalities showing up in people that don't have pain, and you have abnormalities showing up in people that do have pain, how do you know which is causing pain? Well, the problem is, is that you don't. Another problem with using imaging is they will often measure the thickness of the plantar fascia and make a diagnosis based upon that. The standard measurement for having plantar fascia is anything above four millimeters of thickness. The images that we get from MRIs and ultrasounds are not that clear. We're not talking about 4K resolution here. We're looking at tiny differences in plantar fascia thickness to make the diagnosis of plantar fasciitis. Here's an example. I have two stacks of papers here. One is 3.5 millimeters high, one is four millimeters high. Four millimeters high, you have plantar fasciitis. 3.5 millimeters high, you do not. It's almost impossible to see a difference between these two, even up this close. The four millimeter threshold used for the diagnosis of plantar fasciitis is just a number that's used. There's no actual real research or basis behind it. It's just one that they've always used because that's the way that they've always used. The other issue is that thicknesses over four millimeters have been found in people without any symptoms. So thickness alone cannot be used as a criteria for plantar fasciitis. Plantar fascia thickness increases with response to activity and loading. High endurance athletes such as marathon runners have always been shown to have higher thicknesses of plantar fascia than a sedentary adult. Another problem with imaging is the interpretation of those results. The person reading those results has no idea who you are and what your symptoms are. They can make no clinical correlation between what they see on the imaging and what your symptoms are. 
Studies have also shown a high level of error in interpretation of imaging from one radiologist to the next. Looking at all that information, you can see how plantar fasciitis can be easily misdiagnosed, and I believe it truly is. The plantar fascia is a very strong and fibrous tissue designed to support the arch of your foot under weight bearing. Just under the plantar fascia is the plantar intrinsic muscles of the foot. They are so close in proximity as I mentioned before that they are very hard to separate. They are not designed to support the weight as the plantar fascia is and are much more likely to be the cause of symptoms. In our next video we are going to talk about why it takes people so long to recover from plantar fasciitis. And the main reason is because it is not a fasciitis, it is a tendinopathy. Make sure you subscribe and we will catch you on the next one.